welcome back and welcome to the final sort of Scary Jerry Mr. Cheeseball review show thing. I am here with Adeline. You have not seen her since the big explosion, I think. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty And for much. all of you who don't remember me, I am the chick who wears this shit all the time. Right, Cheesy? Exactly. Where's I'm going to break character now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. That squeaky so. voice hurts my throat anymore. <laughs> yeah, because the reason we're doing this one last time, one last hurrah, uh, had to check to make sure the red light was gone, was on, because if it wasn't recording, I would be very upset. It Me is. Me too. <laughs> so, why, why are we doing this? Well, ten years. Can you believe ten years? Not at all. Ten years. Oh, gosh. Two, like, 2012... Toward the end is when we started this. It is 2022. <laughs> wow. So, then again, the last two years haven't really felt like two years. No, they haven't. So. They felt like 11. <laughs> so <laughs> so if, if you notice any craziness, we have not gotten together for three, four years. Because Bloodsucker, a Bloodsucker Jones 2 watch yes. party was the last time you were here. Yeah, and we bumped into each other in the community, but yeah, I don't but think I've been here. Not here. Here. Yeah. On the couch of mystery. Right. And fun. The futon of fun. That sounds <laughs> terrible. So. <laughs> it's better we, than the casting couch. That's, <laughs> that's true. Casting now. <laughs> casting couch of fun. We didn't write a script, so sorry no. if this is very ad libby. But at the same time. I feel like that goes a lot better. Uh, oh, yeah. we, we'll, we'll have a video coming out later on a documentary about why the show's 100% ending before we get into the movie. This, to me, is more natural. Oh, yeah. Because we're not sitting there going, hey, look at these. Hey, touch me here. Or, yeah, or, yeah. What's the script say? Yeah, what's the, what's the script say? I'm it's posted under the camera. I am too old to read a script from this. I am going to have to put on reading glasses. <laughs> Ten years, our and, site's just shot to hell. <laughs> ten years of posting it various places and make sure people weren't going, and so I think the movie is amazing. How about you, Chi? Flip the page. Oh, Z? <laughs> so, now with all, those, all that out of the way, let's talk about the sequel to our anniversary special from two years ago? Last year? All I remember is my character came back from Japan. Yeah, that's, that's all I remember, too. So, Elvira's Haunted Hills. This is the the special Scream Factory edition. I don't think they make it with this box anymore. So, what do you think of it? I actually really liked it. It was... I could tell that it wasn't as well done as the first Elvira movie, mm. but... Everyone was just having a blast with it. You yeah. could tell the actors were having fun. And that's the big thing. It's If yeah. you can tell the the, char the actors are just having a blast, it kind of makes up for the fact that the special effects aren't 100%. Right. And we, we did talk a bit during the movie about how it feels like a trauma early comedy. With yeah. a lot of the jokes, there's a lot of boob jokes because it's Elvira. But then just throwing in the sound effects that Troma would use way back for, like, the first turn. And it's a PG-13 Troma film. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it'd be a PG-13, yeah. With no nudity that I can think of. No. They Although, kept breaking was, the fourth wall, too, yeah. so. But they kept breaking the fourth wall, and I was more shocked that Zuzu, who, was, who is a maid character in mm -hmm. this, I was more shocked she wasn't popping out, because she was a rather... Busty lady. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, good way to put that. But they made ample use of her ample boobs yeah, she, to be the Mary Poppins bag for Elvira. Yeah, and, <laughs> and everything she just pulled out of her cleavage, which was funny until it got to, like, um, like rags and stuff after she'd been running around. And I'm sitting there going, those would not be dry. They would be so covered in sweat. It'd be gross. <laughs> but the, there could be a dryer and a washing that's machine true. in her <laughs> boobs. You don't know. Yeah. And the, the other thing to make mention is this is a very important movie for Elvira because she was going through a divorce. If I remember correctly, she used her own money to make this. And I'm pretty sure a year after this is when she started dating T, who is her now, I think, girlfriend. I don't want to say wife because I 
don't think they they're married. But anyway, this is a big thing in it. Her That's partner. Her partner. Yes. 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 Partner. This is also why the budget seems so small because it was her own money. And what's fascinating is the sets when you first see it look impressive. Mm -hmm. Until, especially on like a Blu-ray, you realize, wait a minute, that just looks like styrofoam or painted on the side, like stone wallpaper is pasted on the stairs. Yeah. Oh yeah. But at the same time, if you just suspend your disbelief, yeah. And I'm sure on a DVD, with yeah. The, with the visual quality not being as, as best, best. It, yeah. it's convincing. It honestly is very convincing. And while some of the special effects aren't that good, some of them hold up about like milk. Uh, <laughs> like, I was going to say there are some good special effects in there, but I, now that I think about it... The final one was good. Yeah, the final Which one was Which is hilarious because of Elvira yeah. being like, I didn't know we had the, the budget for, for this, this special effect. The, the, the final one was good. The castle is early CGI, because in mm -hmm. uh, 2001, it would be early CGI. And that's the thing to keep in mind when you watch movies made from that era, oh, yeah. is the early CGI was bad. Mighty Morphin <laughs> Power Rangers, the movie? Bad. Um, the, go ahead. I was going to say, now that we look back on it, when we, when, I'm sure when it first came out, it would have been like, ooh. Ooh, yeah. That's but amazing. Now it's, yeah, I can tell it was the lower budget CGI or even just early, early CGI. CGI. Now, the, the final thing we should mention is the cast, because, oh my gosh, this cast is amazing. Richard O'Brien's in yes. it. Richard O'Brien, Riff Raff from Rocky Horror Show, uh, Cosmo McKinley from Shock Treatment. Yes, I'm the only nerd who knows his name and has the CD, the Blu-ray, the special edition Blu-ray from the UK. I am a big Shock Treatment nerd. It is my favorite over Rocky Horror. Most people go, yeah, but... Didn't I make you watch that with me? Shock Treatment or Rocky Horror? Shock Treatment. I don't remember. I know we did Rocky Horror, and then I'm like, we have to do Shock Treatment. Oh, yeah, I think you did, because <laughs> I owned it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you're like, huh, I don't know, and yeah. you watched it, and you're like, yep. No, I, I, I still have the VHS floating around somewhere. Oh, nice. Because I bought it from Family Video. <laughs> but I remember you being no. like, I don't know if we should do yeah, the shock treatment. Right. I'm like, we're doing shock treatment. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we did... Way uh, back in way back 19 diggity four. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Richard O'Brien, there's Mary Shear, who I don't know if you know. Her face is so familiar. She was in season one, two, and three of Mad TV. She was, okay. ah, Dixie, ah, Wentworth, who had the pool boy yes, and all that. Yes, yes, that's so, how I know her. Yeah. She I, was, okay. I was just sitting there the whole time going, I know this actress. Uh-huh. I know this actress. <laughs> she was from Mad TV. Now, there is a niece, mm -hmm. and I can't think of the niece's name. Roxana. Roxana. She is played by, I believe the name's Heather Hopper, mm -hmm. who was Nikki from Good Morning Miss Bliss. The original show, Saved by the Bell, before Saved by the Bell, when it focused on Haley Mills as the teacher, Miss Bliss. Okay. She was the one who hung out with them, and as sad as it is to say, I don't know if, I hope it was makeup that made her look that sickly, but she looked almost too sickly to me. Probably just really good makeup yeah. and lighting, too. Lighting. Depending on how they set the lighting up. It can wash somebody out. Yeah, horribly. <laughs> oh, gosh. So. Also, it was really good for the character, too. Yeah. It, she was it, supposed to be the, the, the sickly, sickly looking one, one. The physically sickly one, whereas yeah. Richard O'Brien's character was the more mentally sickly one. Yeah, and Richard O'Brien's character, if you watch this and you expect a comedy, that's great. His character is played completely straight. And it Which almost makes it even funnier. It makes it even oh funnier. My gosh. But it almost feels like he's in a Shakespeare movie and the others are in, again, like a trauma movie. <laughs> it yeah. makes it a lot more fun to me. Then again, with it being dedicated to Vincent Price, it makes yeah. sense why he's playing that character so straight. Right. And it like I told you while we were watching yeah. it, it reminded me of like the funniest take on this group of random characters falling into the house of Usher. Yeah plot line and then just it's, trying to deal with what's going on and some pit in the pen. Yeah. It, it's a comedy take on the old dark house. That's yeah. th that's the best way to describe it. The old dark house trope, I guess. So And, and then Elvira shows up and wrecks it. Wrecks it, yeah. <laughs> so, what do I think of it? I, I liked it. I mean, the first one is has such a punk atmosphere. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like comparing Return of the Living Dead Part 1 to Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Yeah. The oh, first yeah, one is way better. The second one has some good parts, but 
in the end, it's not the first one. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't have that charm. Right. That the first one has, or the nostalgia of the first one. Right. But at the same time, if you come in to it, don't have a single idea who Elvira is, and you watch it, you'll be you'll, hooked. You'll, you'll be yeah. you'll be entertained. Oh yeah. And the other thing to keep in mind is, if you have not seen any of the movies referenced in this movie, like a, a majority of people probably haven't. <laughs> I think that you will have a good time, but if you know the films, it will up your enjoyment. Oh, yeah. So. Also, just all the Edgar Allan Poe nods. Uh huh. Casca of Amontillado with the bricking up of people, pit in the pen. Pendulum. And the. Oh, uh, the House of Usher. Right. Yeah. And the Corman versions, which is why the bricks look so bad. Oh, okay. Because it was a send up to Roger Corman. Aww. So, all right. With that out of the way, mm -hmm. I suppose. I should mention that why I may have said this is our last review, sort of, I still want to do Halloween reviews, yeah. um, and I still want to try to do Christmas reviews, especially if the sequel, correct version of a friggin' sequel gets here, <laughs> which I'll go into detail on in a later video, but we want to thank you guys for watching for these ten years. Oh, God, ten years. Ten years. Shit, where's the time gone? Right. <laughs> and we, we do appreciate it, so thank you for sticking with us, and... Hopefully, Adeline can be on the Snack Show. Hopefully, every now, and again. every now and again. And hopefully, she can come back and maybe do a Halloween review. Maybe not. Who knows? But if she does, great. If not, that's cool too. We appreciate okay. your support. Thank you so much. Thank you.